In this video, we're going to talk about amebiasis. Amebiasis is a parasitic infection caused by Intamoeba histolytica. Intamoeba histolytica infection is common worldwide, and it can affect anyone, although it is more common in people who live in tropical areas with poor sanitary conditions. Several protozoan species in the genus Intamoeba colonize humans, but not all of them are associated with disease. Intamoeba histolytica is well recognized as a pathogenic amoeba associated with intestinal and extra-intestinal infections. Other morphologically identical amoeba species include Intamoeba dispar, Intamoeba Moshkovsky and Intamoeba Bangladeshi. And these are not generally associated with disease. The life cycle and transmission of Intamoeba histolytica. Intamoeba typically exist in two forms, cysts and trophozoites. The cyst forms are able to survive in the environment, and it is this form that is typically ingested by humans. Trophozoites are the active and invasive form of the parasites once in the intestine. Cysts and trophozoites are typically passed in feces. Infection with Intamoeba histolytica occurs via ingestion of mature cysts from fecally contaminated foods, water or hands. Therefore, the mode of transmission of the infection is fecal and oral route. Cysts enter the gastrointestinal tract into the small intestine. Excystation occurs in the small intestine, and trophozoites are released, which migrate to the large intestine. Trophozoites may remain confined in the intestinal lumen, and this is called a non-invasive infection. Here, Individuals continue to pass cysts in their stool and become what's called asymptomatic carriers. Trophozoites can also invade the intestinal mucosa. This is called intestinal disease, causing conditions such as colitis, inflammation of the bowel. The trophozoites here damage the mucosal layer of the intestine through several mechanisms. For example, they can secrete things such as proteinases. They cause lysis of target cells via a contact-dependent mechanism. They induce apoptosis, programmed cell death. They also form what's called amoeba pores, resulting in cytolysis of the infected uh, intestinal cell. Trophozoites can also invade the blood vessel, reaching extra-intestinal sites such as the liver, brain, and lungs. This is termed extra-intestinal disease. It does this because the trophozoites are able to enter the bloodstream. They will first enter the liver via what's called the portal vein and can cause a liver abscess. If the liver abscess grows and invades ruptures into the pleura of the lung, which is right above the liver, it can cause pleuropulmonary infection. Other sites the trophozoites can invade include the brain and the heart, typically via rupturing of the liver abscess here into the pericardium. So in summary, intamoeba histolytica causes a range of clinical disease, including non-invasive infection, intestinal disease, and extra-intestinal disease. In the large intestines, the trophozoites multiply by binary fission, and produce cysts, termed N cystation, and both stages are passed in the feces. As mentioned, cysts can survive days to weeks in the external environment and remain infectious in the environment due to the protective coating it has. Trophozoites, on the other hand, cannot survive outside the human body, and if ingested, would not survive exposure to the gastric acidity. Signs and symptoms of intamoeba histolytica infection. Well, the majority of intamoeba infection are asymptomatic, about 90%. If a person has intestinal infection or intestinal 
amoebiasis. It usually occurs over one to three weeks. Symptoms include mild diarrhea to severe dysentery, producing abdominal pain, diarrhea, and bloody stools. Complications of intestinal amoebiasis include fulminant colitis with bowel necrosis, which can lead to perforation. Perforation of the colon will cause peritonitis with severe abdominal pain. Toxic megacolon can also occur, which is extreme dilatation and inflammation of the colon, the large bowel. For extraintestinal disease, the symptoms depends on where the problem is. If it is a hepatic abscess, this will cause right upper quadrant pain, fever, and anorexia. Complications of a hepatic abscess include rupturing of the abscess. If the abscess ruptures, it can lead to peritonitis with severe abdominal pain. If the abscess ruptures into the pleura of the lungs, it can cause pleuropulmonary infection, causing right upper quadrant pain, cough, hemoptysis, and dyspnea. Diagnosis of amoebiasis involve a fecal microscopy culture sensitivity with antigen testing of the feces or PCR of the feces. Stool culture will not differentiate the pathogenic versus non-pathogenic intermeba species. Antigen testing of the feces and PCR of the feces are more sensitive and can distinguish between intermeba histolytica and other non-pathogenic intermeba species. Treatment of amoebiasis for all infections, whether asymptomatic or symptomatic, paromomycin is used to eliminate the cysts. For symptomatic infections, such as intestinal or extraintestinal amoebiasis, metronidazole is used, either oral for mild infection or for more severe infection, intravenous metronidazole is used. So in summary, amoebiasis is a parasitic infection caused by intermeba histolytica. The clinical presentation varies, including mainly asymptomatic infections or intestinal and extraintestinal infections. Treatment involve elimination of the cysts with paramomycin, and for symptomatic infection, the use of metronidazole. Thank you for watching.